Hi, this is Margo. This is Saturday, April 28, 2018. And today I'm going to talk to everyone about methane. We're going to talk a little bit about carbon dioxide too, because that's included in um, greenhouse gases that we're worried about with the global warming stuff that's going on. But specifically, I want to cover methane. Some people call it methane. It's spelled M-E-T-H-A-N-E. -E. And I found an, a really uh, great website where you can track the methane from all around the world. And uh, it, they give a five-day forecast and rate it. And um, this is out of Europe. And I found this because um, I'm a member of some abrupt climate change groups on Facebook and um, somebody posted this so I just wanted to share it with everyone and kind of explain in very simple layman terms why the climate scientists are so upset and so up in arms about really what's going on in the world and um, and the fact that our days are numbered here on this planet as a species, as a human race, and most of life on the earth is their days are numbered. And this is one of the reasons why. It's a huge reason why. Um, first of all, I'm go going to explain about this website. It's called CAMS. And well, the page that I have up is the uh, page we're going to be looking at in a minute. But here's their home page of CAMS. And it's called Copernicus Atmosphere Monitoring Service. And it's a combination of different agencies that have come together to provide data and it's it's supposed to be accurate and um, okay let's go to what is Copernicus Copernicus is the European Union's Earth Observation Program environmental information is of crucial importance it helps to understand how our planet and its climate are changing. The role played by human activities in these changes and how these will influence our daily lives. The well-being and security of future generations are more than ever dependent on everyone's actions and on the decisions being made today on environmental policies, etc. etc. Anyway, um, it, Copernicus consists of a complex set of systems which collect data from multiple sources, earth observation satellites, and in situ sensors such as ground stations, airborne and seaborne sensors. It processes these data and provides users with reliable and up-to-date information through a set of services related to environmental and security issues. So that's the crux of who uh, who CAMS is, and it covers um, land, marine, atmosphere, climate change, emergency management, and security. So that's who they are. You can go to their website. I'll leave a link below. Here's their home page. Um, atmosphere.copernicus.eu is the website and you can look at live forecast maps from all over the world here they have um, reports they talk about reactive gases they talk about greenhouse gases primarily methane and carbon dioxide. They had fire monitoring around the world. 
it's they have cams that are set up they have charts um, in order to have access to everything you have to somehow be a member and log in which I'm not but I um, I copied and pasted what this um, that had been posted on this Facebook page this is what we're looking at here is a view from the North Pole and it's uh, greenhouse gases and specifically methane forecasts and this is what it looks like when you pull that up and this data is good starting from Friday April 27th um, UTC time so you have to adjust your time to UTC time and there are lots of websites out there that you can find and then it will go through and show you how how the methane is going to be changing ar around that certain area <coughs> in five days uh, by the way Paul Beckwith just put out a video um, using this same data but he was really focusing on a specific part of the Arctic Sea that's melting right up here right there <clears throat> um, in off the coast of Russia and there's a little island there he was specifically focusing on that area and he was saying well yeah you can see how methane is um, all over the different uh, land masses but you know here it is over the Arctic Sea and that's you know they're worried about it melting so fast and everything so but what struck me was the levels of the methane <clears throat> but anyway going back to what you can do with this website um, the little green line is where we're at down here and these little tick marks are every three hours okay so their data is uh, their, uh, the most recent baseline data they have is starting uh, from yesterday Friday April 27th <coughs> UTC and then they can project it forward into this forecast over the five day period so let's put our little marker back here at the beginning of their time frame <coughs> and it tells <coughs> okay this starts at three hours plus three hours okay so then you push this arrow and it's going to make a movie it's c compiling all the data and it's going to make a movie and then you can watch the movie <clears throat> as it goes through the five day forecast and you can see how the methane goes around and it increases and decreases depending on the time of day because you know as it gets hotter then there's more methane being released and then during nighttime the methane release goes down <clears throat> so it's making the movie you can you can see where we're at and it's going to go through Tuesday so Friday Saturday Sunday Monday Tuesday that's five days and this is the the um, graph down here that tells what all the different colors mean on the chart okay and it's it's playing now you can see it here down at the bottom it tells where you're at on the chart and now it's on Sunday <coughs> Monday and going into Tuesday and then it started over and you can pause it at any point 
<clears throat> okay, and then you can start it and it'll just pick up right where it leaves off. <clears throat> So you can see a lot of methane coming up. This is um, Canada and North America here. Here's Alaska. Alaska has a lot. That's the, where the permafrost is. See, this is all permafrost territory here and here. And then over on the right side, see all of that right there? That's Siberia. Wow, did you see that blast? that's as the day goes on there. This is China over here and India has quite a bit. Um, so this is a view from the North Pole and the green here it is at <clears throat> like the blue down here like a blue blue green is 1800 this is parts per billion that's how they measure methane methane at the surface and when you do this chart you want to make sure that you go to level and you choose surface otherwise it'll just show a, a total and that's where it's like all averaged out but if you you want the surface and then that's what's being released right at the surface. So, um, <clears throat> we're going to talk a little bit more about what methane is and these levels in just a moment. But um, the 18, there's 1800, but you can see like most of this area is way higher than that. It's like in the chartreuse range going on up into the yellow range. Chartreuse or this next to chartreuse and this is at um, like 1900 and above and then when you see like the red zone that's around 2000 parts per billion 1980 to 2000 and then 2040 and then this chart goes all the way up to 75,600. I don't kn know if that's a mistake or what but it goes almost to black there. It's like a really dark brown burgundy or something and you can see that over here. That's part of Siberia this whole area here has a lot of that and then over here there's China and up here um, you don't see a lot of the really dark colors like that over on the left side but it's over on the right side from this is looking down this is the North Pole there's Greenland and so forth there's um, Finland or Norway. <clears throat> There's England there. This is Canada up here and then the US down here. Alaska over here and that's all Russia up here. So and then you can change the view. You can go to area and you can go to global. That's very interesting. And there's the global map. Look at look at all those dark areas all up here. You know, North America doesn't look too bad compared to um, Siberia. So this is why they're so worried about the sea ice melting in the Arctic because once that goes there's a lot of methane that's been trapped under the ice and that's going to be coming up and that's going to be heating up the atmosphere and um, this is China and Asian countries 
but uh, that's all the chi China. Here's uh, India and um, that whole area. Isn't it interesting that Africa has a bunch of methane there? This is um, this is Indonesia down here. This is Papua New Guinea, and this is the very southern part of Australia. And actually, South America has quite a bit of methane too. <clears throat> when you go through it. And then you can go to different areas, like if you want to see North America, you just click here. And there you have North America. And you can go through, <coughs> It'll you can make the movie for North America, <coughs> and it'll show you the methane levels specifically for North America. So this is, I've spent all day playing around with this and looking at it and I'm kind of addicted to it now. Um, I'm, well, you know, I'm so in tune with Mother Earth and, you know, empathic with her and it's like I can't stop looking at this now. <clears throat> this really brings it home. Okay, now we're going through the movie. Look at that. So there, at certain times of the day, there are really high methane levels. See, and it's when the sun is up, and when it, when the, they go down, it's during nighttime. But even North America, I mean, we've got some pretty high met methane levels going on there. And. Um, Look at this down in the south. Look at that right there in Texas and Louisiana. And look at the northeast. And then look at Canada. There's a whole line right there in Canada and this whole area. There's a whole line up here going up. Then you've got Southern California. That's where they had all those wildfires. And high methane can make make the atmosphere hotter. And if it's a dry environment, like where we've had a lot of drought, like in the desert southwest, it can spark the wildfires to be going off. So let's pause that for a moment. So you get the idea. <clears throat> so now we're going to talk about methane. <clears throat> about what it is. And why this is so important and what this means to us. Atmospheric methane is the methane present in Earth's atmosphere. Atmospheric methane concentrations are of interest because it is one of the most potent greenhouse gases in Earth's atmosphere. The 100-year global warming potential of methane is 28. That is, over a 100-year period, it traps 28 times more heat per mass unit than carbon dioxide and 32 times the effect when accounting for aerosol interactions. Global methane concentrations had risen from 722 parts per billion in pre-industrial times to 1800 parts per billion by 2011, an increase by a factor of 2.5 and the highest value in at least 800,000 years. Its concentration is higher in the northern hemisphere since most sources, both natural and human, are located on land and the northern hemisphere has more land mass. <clears throat> 
The concentrations vary seasonally with, for example, a minimum in the northern tropics during April to May, mainly due to the removal to removal by the hydroxyl radical. And here's a, a graph. Methane concentrations up to March 2018, monthly peak of 1887.65 parts per billion was reached in November. <clears throat> and here's a chart that shows uh, starting 800,000 years ago how everything was going along pretty good and then look it's spiking and here it is where it's up at 1800 parts per billion and you can read this this is on Wikipedia um, this is very good what there all of this information is very good <clears throat> I'm just going to skip around. Methane in the Earth's atmosphere is a strong greenhouse gas with a global warming potential, or GWP, 104 times greater than CO2 in a 20-year time frame. Methane is not as persistent a gas is CO2 and tails off to about global warming potential of 28 for a 100 year time frame. This means that a methane emission will have 28 times the impact on temperature of a carbon dioxide emission of the same mass over the following 100 years. Methase, methane has a large effect but for a relatively brief period, having an estimated lifetime of 8.9 plus or minus 0.6 years in the atmosphere, whereas carbon dioxide has a small effect for a long period, having an estimated lifetime of over 100 years. <clears throat> so, um, CO2 combined with methane is just recipe for disaster. <clears throat> anyway, here's a list of where uh, they're saying methane comes from. Permafrost, glaciers, and ice cores. A source that slowly releases methane trapped in frozen environments as global temperatures rise. And permafrost, uh, there's been a lot of interest in per melting permafrost in Canada, Alaska, and the Siberian uh, tundra. And um, <clears throat> I've talked about that. And that permafrost is melting really fast. It used to melt slower and slower. Uh, it used to not melt. That's why it was called permafrost. And there have been whole cities and communities and infrastructure built in on permafrost and in permafrost especially like in Alaska and as this is melting like the whole infrastructure is going down including sewers and uh, pipelines um, gas lines uh, water lines I mean it's a huge mess okay uh, methane is also coming up from wetlands Warm temperatures and moist environments are ideal for methane production. It comes from forest fires. Mass burning of organic matter releases methane into the atmosphere. It comes from rice paddies. I didn't know that. The warmer and moister the rice field, the more methane is produced. And so maybe that's why there's all that uh, the methane levels over Asia where they grow a lot of rice uh, China um, Thailand you know all the Asian countries comes from animals microorganisms breaking down difficult to digest material in the guts of um, ruminant livestock and termites produce methane that is then released during defecation 
It comes from plants. While methane can be consumed in soil before being released into the atmosphere, plants allow for direct travel of methane up through the roots and leaves and into the atmosphere. Plants may also be direct producers of methane. Landfills Decaying organic matter in anaerobic conditions cause landfills to be a significant source of methane. Wastewater treatment facilities Anaerobic treatment of organic compounds in the water results in the production of methane. Hydroxyl radical or OH in the atmosphere is the largest sink for me atmospheric methane as well as one of the most significant sources of water vapor in the upper, upper atmosphere. Chlorine radical. Free chlorine in the atmosphere also reacts with methane. So that's where methane can come from. And um, here's a, another chart showing like where they think different kinds of methane com comes from in a percentage from the ocean, hydrates, energy, landfills, remnants, um, <coughs> natural sources of atmospheric methane, uh, methanogenesis, etc., etc., wetlands, animals, plants, methane gas from clathrates, which is from the bottom of the ocean that they're so worried about now, permafrost, anthropogenic sources of atmospheric methane. And now they found that methane is released in the fracking operations that they're going that are going on around the planet where they're trying to get oil out of the ground. It is also part of natural gas, so anytime you have natural gas being produced, you know, coming out of the ground or being piped or anything You've got methane being released. It's also um, found in coal production. In fact, in coal mines, a long time ago, the miners would uh, send a canary into the coal mine, and if it came back, it meant that the methane levels were low enough that it was safe for them to go out down into the coal mine. But if the canary died, it was because the methane level was too high and the canary couldn't breathe. Farm animals, rice agriculture, landfills, etc., etc. Uh, natural gas distribution, methane slip from gas engines, coal mining, you know. Um, you know, you can read about this. There are no safe ways to remove it from the atmosphere. They, you know, the people with the techno stuff, they're saying they're going to create stuff to take it out, but it's too late. It's just too late. Um... And I agree with Guy McPherson that we really, our days are so numbered. Our days are so numbered. So there's a crash course on methane from Wikipedia. There was another really good PDF that I found on methane. This is from Australia. The Australian Australian EPA. Where did this come from? It's a, a it's an Adobe file PDF that I downloaded. Environmental Protection Agency EPA um, NSW. Gov. Au. So this is from Australia. Methane. The NSW Environmental Protection 
Authority is the lead regulator for coal seam gas or CSG activities in NSW. Anyway, what is methane? Methane is a component of the Earth's atmosphere and is present at low concentrations. We inhale methane along with other atmospheric gases such as nitrogen and oxygen when we breathe. At room temperature and pressure, methane is an odorless and colorless flammable gas. It is composed of carbon and hydrogen and has the chemical formula CH4. Methane is the main component of natural gas and CSG, or coal, coal production. It is one of several gases including carbon dioxide, nitrous dioxide, and fluorinated gases that are greenhouse gases. Greenhouse gases trap heat in the Earth's atmosphere which ultimately leads to global climate change. Methane's global warming potential is currently estimated at approximately 28 times higher than carbon dioxide over a, 20, over a 100 year time frame. And then it goes into how it's formed. It's a major component of natural gas. Um, how it's emitted. Here's a graph of how it, a picture of how it's emitted. What it's used for. Concentrations in the air. Is it hazardous and low levels? Yes, it is hazardous. It says, but it says, is methane hazardous? Methane has not been found to have any adverse effect, adverse impact on human health at concentrations generally found in the environment. Exposure to low levels of methane may cause dizziness, headaches, or a general feeling of fatigue. These symptoms subside when exposure to methane has ended. In high concentration, Methane will displace oxygen, depriving the body of oxygen, which may in turn pose an asphyxiation hazard. Symptoms may include as agitation, slurred speech, nausea, vomiting, and headaches. So anyway, then they give the parts per million that's safe and all this. But I thought that was interesting. <clears throat> so, take that away. I'm going to take you back. Uh, now I'm taking you to this climate change website. This is on the epa.gov website. <clears throat> And I'll include links to all of these sites in the video description below. Climate change indicators atmospheric concentrations of greenhouse gases. And here are the charts that were referred to in the Wikipedia article that I read. <coughs> that one. This chart is in the this chart here is included in the other in the Wikipedia article. Global atmospheric concentrations of methane over time. Here it goes up to 1,800 parts per billion. In 2015, of course, this is 2018, and it keeps going up. It's just skyrocketing, and here it is from 1950. It was about at uh, 1,100 parts per billion in 1950, and then by <clears throat> 2015, it was up to 1,800 parts per billion. <clears throat> and 
It says this figure shows concentrations of methane in the atmosphere from hundreds of thousands of years ago through 2015, measured in parts per billion, the data coming from a variety of historical ice core studies and recent air monitoring sites around the world. Each line represents a different data source. And you can also look at Okay, that this methane we're looking at, you can look at carbon dioxide over time. And these other greenhouse gases if you want to. So just just for the heck of it, let's go over to ca carbon dioxide over time. <coughs> Okay, here's carbon dioxide over time. Now right now, it's about at 400 parts per million. They me that's how they measure it, parts per million, ppm. And 800,000 years ago, it was less than 200 parts per million. And then it started going up going up. Look, it got up to 300 parts per million about three, 300,000 years ago. A little over, about 3,200, 300, yeah, a little over 300,000. And then it started going up starting around 1950 and from 250 parts per million to 400 parts per million in 2015. And there it is. From 1950 it was at about 300 and tw uh, 310 parts per million and up to 400 parts per million in 2015. Okay, so there's that resource that you can be, that gives you like a baseline of what to look at. So n now that you've been educated a little bit in methane and CO2, let's go back to our website here. And now you can have a better appreciation for these really high readings. And you see, let's go to global again. We're on methane. You can see that like below the equator, here's the, equ the equator is about here, here. Below the equator, it's blue, but it's still a lot higher. See, 1950, it was 1100 parts per billion. And see, the whole globe has increased. It's about that color, that blue-green color. So that's 1740. So the whole globe has increased in methane since 1950 even. And then some of the globe has increased a lot more. So that's close to 2000. Well, 19, 19 more around 1900 parts per million. And this is April of 2018. That's in, look at that, all of that in the upper northern hemisphere. And you can also look at, you go over to here to filter results. And you can go to carbon dioxide, since we looked at that too. Look at this. That's really bad. 
<clears throat> now, see the yellow down here? The barely yellow green? That's 400. Here's 400 parts per billion. It's like blue green. And there, there, there's nothing that dark of a color down here. Even see here is a little bit in Africa. But look at, look at this. It's above 400 parts per billion, and look north of the equator. <clears throat> it's going up, way up. And so, what happens when you start losing or, or start getting so much more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere First of and methane in the atmosphere? Well, first of all, it does definitely heat things up, but it's also taking oxygen in the, out of the atmosphere. And without oxygen, w just like the animals, all of life needs oxygen to breathe. And like humans need a certain level of oxygen to breathe and get healthy amounts of oxygen uh, to your brain and into your blood system and into all of your tissues and for your nerves. And if you start becoming oxygen deprived, um, you can have uh, you can have seizures. You can have symptoms of Alzheimer's. You can have memory loss. It'd be hard to think. Um, you can also uh, like not be able to walk um, because your nervous system starts to shut down. So this is not not a happy situation at all. And look at look at. Africa, certain parts of Africa there with carbon dioxide. And look at India. Poor India. And all that South Southeast Asia. Look at that. So this is what we're looking at. And this is what we're up against. And it's only April 28th. And so we're just now starting to head into summer, and with summer will come, you know, the Earth is tilting towards the, uh, the northern hemisphere will be tilting towards the sun. It's been away from the sun for the last few months, and now it's going to be tilting towards the sun, and so it'll be getting hotter. And methane is a flammable gas. And so when this methane comes up, it can, it, you know, heat up the atmosphere. It can cause more wildfires in lots of different places. And when you have thunderstorms, you know, and you have more methane in the atmosphere, it could actually create fire, fireballs in the atmosphere, I'm thinking. So, this summer is going to be really bad. I'm, I'm just sitting here watching it. I'm just watching it, and I don't even have words to describe how I feel right now. I really don't. Okay, let's go to surface on carbon dioxide. That was just up in the upper atmosphere. Let's let that load. It's taking a while. I have no words to describe the overwhelming sense of loss. Chart could not be produced. Okay. 
chart could not be produced alrighty um, let's go back to methane let's see if I can get back to that okay here's my methane chart surface <coughs> there it is I'm, you know, this is the most important thing that's going on in the world. This takes precedence over anything else politically, you know, money wise, war. I mean, it, this takes precedence. And, you know, I'm empathic and I'm grieving for the earth and I'm grieving for the whole planet here we're going through a fight look at all that this is methane in South America so people who are moving to South America and think that they're going to be safe hello they're not methane if we get a big burst of methane in the atmosphere what it will do it will suck all of the oxygen out and you won't be able to breathe and you know, we could go extinct, like, really fast. R really fast. Within weeks or days. So this is why I've changed my message to strictly trying to help people understand really how short a time period we have. And how the only thing that's important is getting right spiritually. Nothing else is important. Getting right spiritually. And getting ready to exit the planet. However we go. You know, whether there's an ET intervention or not. Whether we're rescued or not. I don't know. But I don't see... I don't see a lot of hope. I, I gave up hope. I gave it up. So in case people want to know why I don't have a happier message, this is why. Right here, this is why. So, if you want to track your daily methane forecasts and carbon dioxide and other things, you can track all kinds of things here. Just copy and paste this link into your web browser. So, until next time, my name's Margo. My website is margoshealingcorner.com. I'm a hypnotist, holistic life coach, empathic spiritual healer, and I encourage everyone to get get right with God and Jesus, because time is short. Till next here, next time. Take care. God bless. Goodbye.